Hey, what's up? Y'all can't see me. <laughs> out here hanging out. Go see what's going on in the garden while YouTube is doing its thing, sending out, letting know everybody that I'm live, that wants to jump on here and find out how to create great skills in their Kali training, in their Kali martial arts. That's what I'm gonna be talking about today. What's happening? Nice to see some people joining us today. I'm gonna to take you guys into my garden real quick. And then we got, we got some things to chat about, man. I might be doing some more of these lives kind of like this. If you guys like this type of stuff, let me know in the comments. But I want to uh, kind of do some lives where I'll give you guys some uh, training tips. You know, we may not always be training, but I want to make sure you guys got some different training tips. And, uh, you know, make sure that you guys are... You know what that is? You guys know what that is? Make sure you guys are training. Make sure you guys keep uh, accelerating in your training. We got some purple cow over here. We got all kinds of lettuce. My kids just threw all the seeds in there all random. So we got patches of lettuce growing in there. We got more kale. We got spinach and uh, cilantro in this bed, in this bed, and in that bed. Then we got more lettuces, collards, tarragon. And then we got more lettuces, tarragon, and uh, lemon balm in this bed. And if you come over here, I'll give you guys a little mini tour here while, uh, while YouTube is doing its thing. We got some beds of lingonberries. This one's also going to become lingonberries, but we got to get to finishing that one off. We got some new friends over here. This one here is our black velvet gooseberry. We got our Pixwell gooseberry. We got our Viking Aronia berry right over there. Got our Josta berry. And then we got our, uh, our red berry, our red gooseberry. I forgot the exact name of that variety, but got our goji berry. We got all of our blueberries over here. Right behind it in these beds, we've got our asparagus. We got two types of asparagus. We got our purple passion asparagus in this bed. And then behind it, we got our Mary Washington. We got our raspberries. We got tomatoes, we got sweet peppers and hot peppers, and we got beans planted, all the different things there. We've got all kinds of stuff, blackberries, nectarines, plums. We got cherry trees, we got uh, peat, pear, pear trees, we got apricots, we got all kinds of good stuff, almonds, all those types of things. So this is what's happening. And then throughout all of this stuff, let me turn this around right now. Throughout the entire garden here, you guys see I got all these paths laid out. I had someone comment before, dude, you got all these arrows. Yeah, I'm using the arrows right now to help uh, mark out some of our paths. But there's going to be little training stations and little workout stations and all that throughout the paths here in the garden. So, uh, you know, when I'm training or when I got Tom here or anything like that, or I'm doing uh, chapter meetups and stuff like that here at the Kali Center Compound at Yakuta Gardens, then uh, everybody can uh, can train and everything like that, and we can get some good workouts and everything. See some of my bars right behind me and stuff. So eventually, all these things are going to have their stations all throughout the garden. So how cool is that? Uh, I'm also going to be building some training stuff that's going to be out in the woods and all that stuff too. So it's going to be gnarly, super, super gnarly. You guys probably recognize the, the Kali Center, the Kali Stage right there. <laughs> eventually there'll be stuff growing all over it and everything so but you know we're getting there we're getting there so we're in our second year of building the garden right now so you know we're still still getting the infrastructure built in and, and all that stuff so uh what did i title what, what did i title this video who can tell me who saw who saw it or you're like no way man Kylie center's on and you didn't you didn't even see it you're just like What's happening? Nice, you got a notification. Garden looks great. Rock, goji, blueberry, cherries, yum. All very healthy things, yep. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So we do a lot of eating out of the garden. We do a lot of foraging. You know, my kids love to pop all the dandelion and eat all the dandelions and everything. So, 
is lifting weight recommended for training in Kali? So my fitness regime, I do recommend having fitness. Uh, you know, there's 12 areas of Kali. And uh, it's one of the points I'm going to talk about anyway. Yeah, there you go. Fastest way to great Kali skills, you call the video. That's right. And then I said, must watch. <laughs> um, but I, I do recommend having some sort of fitness training. Now, uh, what I do for me personally, because I enjoy it, I like, I like calisthenics. So just using your body weight. And I also like kettlebells and like dumbbells. Like I like using free weights. Um, you know, there's, there's a 12 areas of Kali. Uh, you've got your, your single sword, single stick, double, spotty adaga, knife, double knife, empty hands, pole arms, like your, your staff, your spear, uh, the oar. You got your flexible weapons. That's eight, right? You got flexible weapons. Uh, you've got your throwing weapons, nine. You've got uh, your uh, shield. The shield method is in there. And then you also have your projectile weapons. And then the 12th area of Kali is the healing and meditation arts. And at Kali Center, we also put in health, right? So because healing and meditation, right? Health. And part of health is fitness. And everything for area 12 for us is how do you actually improve your Kali performance, your physical Kali performance, okay? Um, so that falls, the fitness falls under area 12 for us. So any kind of, you know, mental training that you can do, physical fitness, uh, you know, making sure you're getting good nutritious food so that way you're healthy on the inside. You know, that, of course, you know, splurging every now and then is fine. It's totally acceptable and all that, you know. But uh, we want to make sure that, obviously, the healthier that we can be, uh, you know, the more benefit that's going to give to our collie performance. So I would say that not necessarily weight training is, uh, is an absolute must, but definitely some sort of fitness because everybody's got different goals that they want out of their training in Kali or any martial arts that you're doing. Um, so make sure that your training is accompanying what your goals are. Okay. So that, that's the most important thing. Like I don't want to bulk up, but I definitely want to increase the endurance of my muscles. Right. So that's why I like calisthenics, you know, so it's, uh, you know, and I like kettlebell and all that. So when I work out, I'm not looking to add on muscle and add on weight and all that stuff. I just want to increase the endurance level of my performance. Make sense? So that's what I, that's what my fitness is geared towards. Now, of course, you know, you're going to lose weight. You're going to get more cut, more chiseled. You're probably going to gain a little bit more muscle mass and all that. So it just depends on what you want. Okay. This is just what I want. You know, so, um, but I do highly, highly recommend some sort of fitness. Now, along with your fitness, the other thing, when you're looking at like your strength training, uh, your dieting, all that stuff, the other th component that's really important for Kali, really important, that is going to be your, your health part, your, your uh, you know, injury prevention is make sure you are spending time on your flexibility and mobility training. This is why Tom has developed an entire program around flexibility and mobility. You know, his Kali yoga, his Kali, you know, we call it our Kali athletics. It is absolutely, extremely, extremely important. At least, at least when you're training the Kali center way. You know, our training is very dynamic. Uh, as you guys know, we're very, very uh, heavy is the wrong word because I don't want you to think that our footwork is heavy, but we're very aggressive on the footwork, right? Like we perform a lot of footwork. Like we want to move, we want to move, we want to move. Not all Filipino martial arts are like that. Uh, some stand still and they do their drills. For us, you know, we look at the true skill of being able to attack, being able to counterattack, being able to, uh, you know, be able to deal with multiple opponents, being able to navigate all different types of terrain. 
Um, so you got to be able to navigate in all this stuff. I mean, I, I've got a pitch right here. This is a crazy gnarly pitch, and you got to be able to navigate all that stuff. You need footwork when you're when you're you know flowing with five six people against you when you're in there. Otherwise, if you don't have footwork, they're gonna swarm you like killer bees, and they're gonna be stinging you with their sticks. <laughs> all right, but uh, yeah. So you know, make sure you got some flexibility training in there as well. And if you don't know what to do, jump into our Kali Apex, um, especially our Apex coaching program that we have available. It's on our Patreon. You can access it through KaliCenter.com and all that stuff. And then you can get access to all that stuff. You know, every single week, Tom's putting up videos to help you improve your flexibility, help you to improve your mobility, help you to improve your, your recovery from your you know, strenuous intensive training sessions and things. So every week that's added in. So for our gold members and for our premium members, you guys are getting our Kali Athletics training as well. So all that is part of Area 12. Um, if you're looking for just a place to kind of start, grab our Kali Yoga course. We got Kali Yoga Volume 1. That's a great place to, to start, um, to, especially to, to help with the flexibility department. Um, you know, he really does a good job at targeting making sure that you know, you're getting good rotation in your spine, making sure that your hips are becoming more flexible, you got good you know, opening up of your hips, you know, making sure that your knees are doing, doing well, uh, your ankles are doing well, making sure that your, your, your hamstrings and your calves are getting a good active stretch uh, and all that. And it's gonna help improve your footwork. And it's gonna help to improve your mobility. I do a lot of it, okay, I'm training it. You know, a lot of a lot of the Kali Center, like our chapter leaders and stuff, they're they're training it, and everybody's been seeing incredible, incredible results and improvements in their training and their skills. So uh, make sure that you guys are doing that. Really, really make sure that you're spending time with that. And it doesn't have to be long. You know, you're not you're, you're not sitting there having to you know sit there in in the splits for you know three hours or something like that every single day. It, it, you know. You don't, you don't need to be spending three hours a day on stretching or whatever, but you know, just, you can even use it just to kind of target your trouble areas. You know, if you if you got tight hips, you know, you can uh, use the program to help learn the movements and everything to target your hips if they're really tight. Uh, if you're in the Apex coaching program, then you can always set up a one-on-one -on -one video private session uh, with Tom and he'll take you through everything you need to do. So whatever your personal elements may be, whatever you need to improve on, especially in that department, you know, you can set up a one-on-one -on -one with Tom. It doesn't matter where you are in the world and, uh, and he'll be able to help you out with that. Um, so that is, that was a great, 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 great question. Let's see. Do we have any other questions? Uh, that I can kind of knock out of the park here real quick. Daniel says, I've mostly replaced traditional weights with heavy clubs, mace, and Indian clubs. Yep, I know a lot of people that do that stuff too. Uh, I did I did that. Uh, Tom does mace as well. Uh, I, I've experimented with mace and Indian clubs, you know. There's so many ways to do, to, to work out, you know, and they all have their benefits. So find a thing that you enjoy, find a thing that's just like, it's fun for you and let that be your fitness. If you don't like the traditional weight route, don't do that. Don't do a fitness that you don't enjoy. Like I enjoy, I enjoy hanging on my bars. That's my favorite way to work out. I like hanging on my bars. I like doing push-ups. I like doing my Russian twists. Like I like doing my in and out abs. Like I, I like doing that stuff. So, um, Make sure that your fitness is something that you actually enjoy. If you do enjoy going to the gym and doing the traditional weight thing, do that. If you're like, I hate calisthenics, I just, I just want to, you know, lift heavy, then do that. Do that because it's going to help you achieve your goals, what you want out of your college training. All right, but uh, I do highly recommend that. Now, I do highly recommend the flexibility training as well. That is critical. Critical. Okay, so that kind of covers all that area 12 stuff. I do light weights, not to bulk up, right, leaner fitness. Yeah, so, you know, all these things are really, really good. There's, there's definitely not one way. 
uh, because there's not one way to be a Kali practitioner, right? So people are training for different reasons and stuff and, and you know, everybody, you know, you just, you, you got your own goals, you know? So just make sure that they're lined up with your goals. My goal, the same as every night, try to take over the world. I like that goal, man. That's a good goal. <laughs> That's what Kali Center is, is working on right now. So if you want to take over the world, my, my recommendation to you is make sure that you are 100% with Kali Center because when we take over the world, you're going to be able to be with us on that because that's what we're doing. Footwork, footwork, footwork. Unless you walk on your hands, it is footwork that all your fighting is based on. Yes. So to improve your Kali, uh, yeah, for area 12, absolutely the fitness thing, the flexibility thing. Um, footwork is huge. Make sure you are training your footwork every single day. Uh, even though there's all these triangles and all these great drills and all this stuff, the footwork really falls into three categories. You have your segmented footwork, you have your triangular footwork, and you have your circular footwork. And, uh, you want to make sure you're training your footwork, footwork, footwork all the time. And don't forget about running. Running is a footwork method in Kali. So you got to make sure that you are from time to time you're running like this, this little hill that I'm walking on right here, like I love using this for, for my sprints and stuff. Like I sprint this thing forward, I sprint it going backwards, I sprint it sideways to the right, to the left. So I like doing all kinds of different stuff on here. And then sometimes I'll grab like my sticks or my double sticks, whatever, and I'll do my footwork drills all up and down this little, uh, this little road right here. So it's just, uh, it's a great, great, great thing to do. So you can never have enough footwork training okay um another thing i'm going to talk about is let's see victoria says i saw tom's video you both know your stuff yes we do we've been doing this for a long time thank you for noticing that we both know our stuff um yeah you know this is this has been my my profession for for a little while now biking is another really good one that's a great one. You know, like I like Tom and I actually, we both skateboard. So I like to skate sometimes from, and I'm getting a little older now. I can't be as aggressive and as crazy on a skateboard as I used to be, but I still like to get on my board every now and then and, you know, go to the park and, you know, pop my ollies, my kick flips, my hard flips and do my grinds and all that stuff. Skate, skate the hips, skate a little bit of mini. Tom's a killer at, at transition skating though. I, I've always been more of the street skater stuff. Do you have a chapter leader in Canada? No, I do not. We are interested in conquering Canada. We're very interested in conquering all the provinces of Canada. So uh, if, you, if you or anybody you know is interested, this is really hard to do when I'm holding my phone. Hang on, guys. There we go. I'm getting, I'm stripping down for you guys. It's starting to warm up. It was chilly here this morning. So I'm stripping down for you now. I'm going to go put this over there. Um, so, but yeah, if you are interested in it or anybody you know is interested in a chapter that where you're at or anything, I'll put it on this one. Uh, have them contact me because, you know, they can, uh, if they're interested, they can check out what the requirements are. It's nothing too crazy, but, uh, you know, there's some requirements for that stuff. My brother, good vibes from Colombia. What's happening? Love calisthenics or calisthenics. <laughs> Hello, Panther Mountain. What's going on? What's going on? Good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so there, here's a couple things, guys. Here's a couple things that is going to really help you to achieve great skills in your Kali, okay? I want to give you guys a few handful of things besides all those other tips and everything, which are all great things. They're really important. They're really important. You know, making sure we're focusing on things like attributes, coordination, agility, flexibility is in there, you know, being able to control tempo. Okay. So when we say speed, speed is not always fast, being able to control tempo. So that way you go into your timing, you can control, you can regulate your timing, um, being able to control your power. You know, generate power, control power, uh, being able to strike with precision, meaning you have control over your weapon, so your weapon's not taking control over you. Accuracy, make sure you can hit your target at will because the targets are moving. 
and uh, visual acuity, the ability to actually track, and, you know, to see and follow the flow, the fight, the lines, the energies, the tactics, the techniques, the timing, the range, the range changes, the timing adjustments, the manipulations of timing, all these different things. You know, the generation control of momentum. You know, there's there's a lot of uh, a lot a lot of things that need to be developed. So how do we make sure that we're developing all of these things? Uh, number one thing is, <laughs> you guys probably heard me say this before if you've been following me for a long time. Uh, make sure that you are finding the place that matches up with your goals and what you want. Right? So Kali Center does not match with everybody's training goals. Right? I know that. Like I'm not going to be naive and be like, come you know, train with Kali Center. If you want to train with Kali Center, uh, you know what you're going to get. You're going to move around a lot, <laughs> right? You're going to move around a lot. You're going to learn about strategy. You're going to learn about tactics and application of tactics. You're going to develop technical precision. You're going to build your attribute development, okay? But you got to build the skills before they become attributes, okay? And you're going to develop a, a winning mentality because that's just, you know, what needs to be done. A problem-solving mentality, right? A mentality where, you know, you don't become a victim of your problems but you are you know learning to create solutions to your problems and things like that you're becoming a negotiator that's how we look at it here at Kali Center when we're flowing or sparring whatever you want to call it we are negotiating okay that's what we're doing we're negotiating range we're negotiating tactics we're negotiating timing we're negotiating momentum we're negotiating the lines right? We're negotiating, trying to confuse our training partner. So it's easier that we can hit them. They're negotiating all these things back with us as well. So it becomes an art of negotiation is, uh, you know, how we kind of look at it here at, at Kali Center. Um, so in order to make sure that we're doing all those things, number one thing is make sure that you are doing your research and you are finding a school, a teacher, a training group that is in line with what you want from your training. Okay, what your purpose is and what you want from your training. If you only want like a specific quarto thing or a specific system of things or something specific or whatever it is, make sure you find that place that lines up with that. Okay. Number two is make sure that you qualify your teacher. Okay? You have to qualify your teachers. Okay. Don't don't just you know go to whoever and and just start training with this person. Now you can start with whoever, but keep searching for, you know, is this person lined up with what I want, what I want out of my training, what I, what I want out of my life, my attitude, my behavior, all these things are really important. Okay. So qualify your teacher. Okay. Do you want a teacher that is the example of training? Like they're training all the time. Do you care about that? Maybe you don't care about that. Maybe you're like, I just want a teacher that's an encyclopedia. I don't care if they train or not. I just want to learn from, you know, whatever. That's fine. That's totally fine. Okay. But just make sure that you are qualifying your teacher. They line up with what your expectations are for yourself. Okay. Very, very important. Um, another way that you get to do that, you know, to ensure that is pay attention to the activity in their environment, in the student or in the teacher's environment, uh, whether it's a school, whether it's you know something like what I do, I do a lot of online stuff. Make sure you're paying attention to the activity. Okay, so watch the students, watch the other people at their school, their organization, and all that stuff. If they are achieving these great results, you know, in your idea, they're great results. Then that may be somewhere that you want to consider. Um, if they're not really achieving that, if it's, if it's not matching up with what you're looking for, then move on. With that said, now that, you know, that doesn't mean you can't cross train, cross train. If that is something that you want to do, here's my advice when it comes to cross training. If you really want to get great at something, you really want to achieve great levels of skill at something. Okay. It's always good to explore the different options, you know, going to seminars and different camps and going to, you know, buying different programs and, and all that stuff. But you want to find one, two, maybe three people at the most that you want to just study them 
and everything that they've got, study deeply about that, okay? And uh, that's really an important thing that I have found in, in my time of you know, training martial arts. You know, different places, different people have different ideas, different way of doing things. You know, part of qualifying your teacher is can this te person teach in a manner that I can understand and follow, okay? That's really important as well. Um, you know, some people are, are just, they're great people. Like, you know, there's a lot of great people out there, but, they, you know, teaching-wise, they're, they're just not great teachers, you know? You know, and you might want to see, you know, if this is a long-term investment of yours, or this is a long-term thing that you want to do, you, know, you want to also kind of look at the model of their organization. Are they going to be around for a while? Are they going to be around long enough? You know, uh, do they have a school that kind of looks like, eh, they may be out of business in, uh, you know, three to six months? You know, so you want to kind of observe that stuff too, because it would really suck to get involved with something and it's like the greatest thing in the world. And then all of a sudden school's not there. You know, when I was in Taekwondo as a kid, you know, Taekwondo, when I was a kid, dude, th this was my favorite place to be, you know, in the city part of my life. And, uh, one day we show up there and he's gone. Master Chang was gone. Like, he just, he just didn't come back, you know? And the school was open for, you know, the rest of that month. The senior, uh, the senior students kept it open. But then, you know, after that, like, how do, they, how do they keep it going? He just literally just got up and left. Um, so, you know, what do you, what do, you do with that, right? So as a kid, like, that was crushing as a kid because... You know, Master Chang, he, he told me about all these dreams he had for me. He wanted to train me up for the Junior Olympics. He wanted to, you know, bring me to South Korea with him to, to train for the Junior Olympics and all this. Like, you know, I was on the demonstration team. I was, I was there every single day, six days a week, you know, I, and, and I was, dude, like, I was 10 years old teaching classes. I was, you know, I remember when I was a blue belt, I was teaching white, yellow, orange, and green, and green belts, they're, they're forms. You know, I was teaching them how to do the proper technique to break the boards. I was sparring with it. Like I was teaching at 10, 10, 11 years old and it was just gone one day, you know? So that's another thing that you got to consider too. Look at the track record. Look at, you know, is this place going to be around? Um, and all that stuff. You just got to kind of, you know, do your diligence work, you know, do your diligence work on it. Um, so that's really big is make sure, making sure that you're qualifying your teachers, qualifying that this is the place that you want to train. Okay. That's huge. Beyond that, another thing that you want to be looking at, you know, is, is there a program here? Is there, is there a, something that I can follow? Um, and then what's the communication like, you know, can, can I ask questions? <laughs> sounds, sounds ridiculous, right? Can I ask questions? Most people be like, yeah, dude, I, I got a school and people can ask me questions. And <clears throat> there's some schools out there like, dude, the teachers, like some people get offended by that. And can you ask all questions? Is it open communication? So, uh, you know, you, these are just different aspects that a lot of people don't really think about. Uh, the curriculum thing is actually pretty important. Um, you want to make sure that there's some sort of direction. Now, that doesn't always mean that there's necessarily, you know, rank identifications and all that stuff. Like here at Kali Center, we do things very, very Filipino martial arts traditional. So we don't have belts. We don't do, you know, certificates. Uh, we, don't, we don't do that type of stuff. Uh, you know, we allow your skill to become your belt or to become, you know, the, your your recognition recognition your skill becomes that here so if it's a uh if it's a goal of yours like you got to have that belt or you got to have that piece of paper you know does the place that you want to go to does it offer that you know like we we just don't do that um we keep things very very fma traditional you know my first uh 
FMA teachers. It was backyard training. Um, it was hard. It was rough. And there was no such thing as, as belts or ranks or anything like that. It was, he's been doing this for a little longer than you. Partner up with him. <laughs> you know, that's all it was. Um, but, you know, here at Collie Center, so we don't, we don't have the belt thing, but we do have a curriculum, right? We definitely have a process. We have a systematic, a logical, systematic approach to training, to skill development. Uh, now, that's not shared here on our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel is kind of more general. Um, but where we put that in is in our Kali Apex training. Our Kali Apex training is systematic. It, there is a logic to it. Um, so if, you, if you've grabbed our Kali Apex basic training course over at KaliCenter.training, uh, if you've grabbed that, then you'll see that there's, there's a formula to it. Okay, we have a, an actual formula. Um, so you want to kind of see that about you know, who you're training with, who you're selecting to training with. You know, if you asked for an outline, can they give you an outline of the training? So that way you have some direction. You know where you're going, right? You, you got to have some goals set up for yourself and you got to have at least some sort of idea of the direction of how to go and uh, achieve those goals, right? Like what's the path for you to walk? Uh, if you just kind of start heading out into the woods, it's a great adventure, you know, but eventually you're going to ask the question, but where am I going? You know? Um, so you just want to make sure that, they're, that they have that available. It doesn't mean that they have to have a printout of it, but they should be able to tell you, you know, where, where are we going here? You know, here at Collie Center, right, our curriculum is broken down into degrees. You know, this is how I've organized it. And each degree, depending on what you want from your training, you can go as deep as you want in that degree or not, you know, but you just have to get good at it to get to the next one uh, because that's the process. Like if you're not solid at the minor level curriculum, you're just not going to be able to pull off the first degree material. Like it's just, you're just not going to have the skill to do it. I can teach it to you. And I remember this is a, uh, I remember when I was training with Tim, uh, Tim Wade in Pekiti Tertia, I remember he's like, you know, everybody, when it came to the Sagittas, he's like, everybody wants to learn the forms. And he would be at these seminars and it was like, hey, what's the, the Sagittas? Can you show us the forms? He's like, yeah. Do you want to learn how to use it? No, nah, I just want to know the forms. And some people just want to know that. And that's totally cool. Um, but, you know, so it's same, kind of same thing like, like for our stuff, like first degree. Yeah, I could show you it. But if you're not there skill-wise, you're not going to be able to actually do it and use it, which is a shame because it's going to, I mean, it's going to teach you how to dominate that area of, of Kali. Um, you know, there's so much skill there. So, you know, we do have that formula, you know, our minor level curriculum, that's the whole foundation thing, which, you know, every FMA's foundation is different than the others. Um, but it's the whole foundation thing. Like we get you moving with your footwork. We teach you all of our striking mechanic principles. Uh, we teach you how to calibrate those things. We teach you the, the, a sequence of drills to uh, start to learn and understand and build range. Uh, we teach you, um, I mean, just all kinds of stuff, man. Range, timing, tactics, strategy, everything is in the minor, is in the minor level. Then, in the first degree, we are now really starting to build your level of skills, okay? We're starting to frame the house, as I like to say. Okay, we're teaching you that everything on that, on that long range and how to bridge in and how to take control and all that. And then, in the second degree, we're teaching you all the inside game stuff, too. Because we, the way I look at it as, is like, you got to be able to understand how to get into Corto, how to bridge that distance, or you got to understand how that distance gets bridged on you. And once you have that, now, now there's a reason for all the Corto stuff, right? Like why learn all the Corto stuff if there's no reason for it? If you don't know how the transition of Largo to Corto even works, 
then all the sombratas and who buds and all that stuff, it's, it's not going to be useful for you because you, you're, you don't even understand the transition, right? You're not understanding how this actually happens. So, um, you know, that's how our, our curriculum is, is, is lined out. So the other thing is, you know, so obviously you're, you're qualifying your teacher and you are, you know, making sure that there's an outline there so that way you can train and you have direction, you know where you're going. There's a process to this. There's a logic to all of this. It's not just every day I'm gonna, you know, teach you whatever I feel like. Um, there's an actual logical approach. Uh, then the other thing is, getting around the people. So we do a lot of online teaching. You know, we, we teach people online because we want to make sure that it's accessible to people all over the world. And, you know, we do have different programs. We have like our training academy, basic stuff, and we have our Apex. And our Apex is geared towards those that, spe that want to sp specialize specifically in the Kali Center approach. You know, a lot of our other stuff, our DVD downloads and our, uh, you know, just kind of our more generic training academy program. That stuff is more for, you know, the eclectic practitioner. But the apex is for the person that's like, I want to be a Kali Center practitioner. I want to know the Kali Center way of doing things. Um, and I started doing the online stuff years ago. This was, I mean, seven, eight years ago, really, before Kali Center, I started doing it. Um, but I started doing that years ago because I was getting messages from people all over the world, like, I want to train Kali, but there's none available. There's no teacher, there's no school out here, you know, Sri Lanka, all over the place, all over the world. So I'm like, well, I'll put together this, this program that, you know, so people can train. Um, and that's why for here at Kali Center, you know, we recommend that no matter where you're training, find somebody to train with. You know, put yourself out there and find somebody to train with. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot supplement a training partner. Okay? You got to have a training partner. It's just, it's so important. Now, there's, solo training is absolutely critical. A partner does not mean you don't solo train. You got to solo train. That's where you're developing your athleticism. That's where you're breaking things down. You're learning your processing methods. So solo training is absolutely critical. It does not replace a partner. A partner does not replace solo training. They're both really important. But getting around the right people to train with, this is a defining factor on how great you're gonna get at what you want, at what you want. It's gotta fit what you're looking for and what your goals are. You know, getting around like-minded people, you know, that's a, a really important one. People who are goal-orientated, people who also have direction. It doesn't have to be the same thing that you want out of your training, but those people are determined to get what they want out of their training, right? They are, they're working for it. They're training for it. They're suffering for it. You know, one of the things that we do is, you know, like we have our chapters and all that that are, you know, growing. We, we just we just opened up another chapter in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, my, my boy, our secret weapon, Ben, he's uh, leading that chapter. Uh, we call him the Collie Center secret because a lot of people don't really know about Ben. He's pretty quiet. You know, he does he does his thing. Um, but the dude's getting really freaking good and he's fast. Um, so a lot of people don't really know about Ben, but he's our, he's our secret. He's our secret weapon. Um, you know, but we do every year, once a year, we do our immersion training camp. You guys watch the videos. You probably saw me put up a, a promo video of our uh, immersion training camp last night. This is our five day crazy training camp, right? We train for five days. Uh, it's 10 to 12 hours of training a day. And it's not like your typical seminars that's like four to six hours. We train for 10 to 12 hours a day. Uh, it's outside the whole time, and it's just a crazy intense amount of fun is what it is. Okay, You're flowing. You, you, you learn a drill, and then you, you start putting it in application in the flow, in, in the sparring. Right? We use the term flow. 
Well, everybody else uses the term sparring because there's different ways that you can spar. We use the term flow because that's what's going on, right? It's a negotiation. So you got to know how to flow in a negotiation. Yeah, you don't spar in a negotiation. You got to know how to flow in a negotiation. Um, so like at our ITC, for example, this is a place where like-minded mentalities get together and they're just training, man. They're just working on their individual thing and they know that for them to accomplish their list of goals, they need to help you accomplish your list of goals, okay? And uh, that's the type of people that you want to be around. Now, I'm not, I'm, I'll kind of pitch ITC, but I'm not, I'm not really selling ITC because I, in all honesty, I don't really care if you come to it or not, okay? Because uh, with or without you, I'm training, and everybody that's coming out to it is training anyways. So here's my little pitch for it. If you're interested, if you want to come to ITC, registration ends May, May 15th. I got five spots left. Okay, that's what I got left for ITC. Whether I fill those five spots or not, registration closes on, the, on May 15th. So if you want to come, head over to collegecenter.com, get more information about it, contact me about it. And uh, we'll get you, you know, we'll get you set up. If you don't, great. If you don't want to be there, I don't want you there. If you want to be there, I want you there. Okay. There's my, there's my pitch for ITC. But the ITC thing is an example of the most important thing is getting around like-minded people, right? Get around people that are goal-orientated uh, in the martial arts. There's a such thing as good training partners, poor training partners, and then there's great training partners. Tom is a great training partner. Ollie, not so, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Ollie's a great training partner. Tom is a great training partner. Um, I'm gonna give you a couple examples why he's a great training partner. Number one, he knows his goals. He knows exactly what he wants out of his training. He also understands that as he is growing and as he is getting older and as he is growing in his skills, that what he wants evolves. He's very aware of that. He's very attuned to that. So what he wanted when he started with me when he was 19 years old, it's not the same. There may be a fundamental there that is pretty, that's kind of the same, but he is in a different place in his life. You know, now he's, I mean, he's been training with me for 12 years. Dude's what, 30, 31 years old now, right? So he's, uh, he's at a different place in his life and he recognizes that. So his goals have evolved with that. So he, he's got his goals. He knows what he wants from his training. Number two, he's committed. He is so committed to his training. The dude shows up, man. When I was teaching in Chicagoland, we, we had our school, we were open seven days a week. Tom was there seven days a week. I mean, he was committed. He was working also, you know, two jobs or two, three jobs. He'd come out to class. He'd come out to every single seminar, every camp, everything. The dude was, he's just committed. He studies the material, but he doesn't just show up to class. That's not actually what makes him great. The guy solo trains all the time, all the time. He just, he wants what he wants so bad that no excuse is going to get in his way. Uh, I've had this guy, he's trained with me. I remember he had a, uh, an accident, a skateboard accident, 270'd his foot. His toes were, were behind him. And uh, God, you know, he had to go get surgery on it. He was in a, in a boot. Dude trained on a broken ankle, dude. The dude trained in a boot. You know, right after surgery. I remember, you know, he was at a skateboard competition. And I remember when he, uh, when that happened, that incident happened, he called me from the hospital and he goes, I'm pissed. I broke my ankle. It's really bad. I'm like, okay, well, you got to get it fixed. He goes, no, dude, I'm pissed because how do I train? How do I train like this? You know, and I'm like, get it fixed. And when you get home, 
we'll start training. <laughs> All right. And uh, I remember his PT, who was a Filipino, kind of funny, right? His PT was like, dude, people that have this type of injury, at most, maybe 40, 50% recovery. And Tom's like, I can't accept that. What do I do? He came to me. He was like, what do I do? I'm like, dude, you got to train Kali, dude. You got to start training your footwork. Even with your boot on, you got to train your footwork. You got to train it to what you can. And his last meet with his PT, when they went over all the range of motion, he's like, I don't know how this happened, but you've got 99% mobility back in your ankle. Fucking Kali, man. <laughs> you know, the way that we're training Kali, dude, it's, you know, and, and we have quite a few things like that, quite a few stories like that and stuff. But, uh, you know, that's what makes him great. That's what makes him great. He's goal oriented. He knows what he wants out of his training. He's, he's just completely devoted to his training, you know, and, uh, and that doesn't mean that he's trained 16 hours every single day. And, you know, that's, you know, he doesn't eat food. He just, Kali is his energy, life source energy, but he's just, you know, he's, he thinks about it a lot, you know, and everything that he's doing is like, how, how do I, you know, I, I want to go do yoga so that I can improve my Kali performance. You know, I need to get this job so I can make sure I have the finances so I can show up to every single Kali event I possibly can, right? Like he just made it a priority to become great. So, uh, you know, when you find people like that, which is, I mean, it's, it's one, in, one in 10 million in the world of martial arts, uh, especially in the world of Kali, it's like one in 10 million, um, you got to hang on to people like that. Those are the people you want to be around. You need to be around those people if you're looking for your level of greatness. And it doesn't have to be matched up with his, okay? It doesn't have to be matched up with mine. Whatever you want, what your idea of greatness is, you got to match your people, you up with people who also know what their level of greatness is. Or at least, you know, they, they're going for that, okay? It's really important that you're around those people around those people physically nowadays be around those people virtually just like this right you're you're hanging out on youtube and all that you know you find those greats books is another great one like i'm a i'm a i'm a big uh, advocate of you know make sure that you're reading books of the greatest minds you know harry potter i'm sure it's a great book hunger games i'm sure it's a great book i don't even know i'm so outdated on that stuff but you know reading things like marcus aurelius Aristotle, Seneca, you know, these, these are great minds that has shaped things. You know, read, read the Tao of Jeet Kune Do. You know how many JKD practitioners and instructors are out there? They, they, don't, they don't even know the, 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 Tao, the, the Tao of Jeet Kune Do. I, had, I, I was teaching a seminar uh, in St. Augustine a couple, a couple of weekends ago. I had a couple of JKD people there, and I'm like, what's the five ways of attack? They couldn't answer the question. I'm like, oh, my gosh. You know, I remember I was training with Vunak when I was, when I was training under Vunak, we had full, full certified instructors. I'm like, dude, what's the rap program? They couldn't even answer that. I'm like, this is what you're, what are you teaching to people? You're a full certified instructor. You can't answer these basic questions about your, your, your methods. Um, that's just, you know, qualify your teachers, right? Yes. It's just like having quality friends. You know, that's, that's really what it's like here at Kali center. That's, that's how, you know, we end up becoming friends. You know, some martial arts teachers are like, don't become friends with your students. These guys aren't my students. Okay. These guys are fellow Kali practitioners, guys, girls, you know, but they're fellow Kali practitioners. I happen to be someone that they've chosen to help guide them along the way but I really don't like calling them my students. They're my investments. These are my training partners. You know, these guys have found something that they want to do in a manner that they want to do it. And they've, they've made that decision. And uh, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that they achieve the goals that, of what they want. So they, you know, we become friends. You know, we become friends. 
So yeah, that's, it, it's really important. You know, it's like that saying, it's like that saying that, uh, you know, you're going to become as successful as the top five people that you surround yourself with. You know, so it's like, if you want to become a millionaire, surround yourself around millionaires, you know, it's like that whole thing, same thing, same thing. I'm a living testament to that, to that, uh, methodology. I am a living testament to that. You know, we could talk about martial arts business and all that stuff another time for anyone that's interested in that. But, uh, I changed the people that I was around it business wise too. And that, that, uh, changed everything for me. Is it Kali is about I'm going to go through some of I'm going to go through some of your comments if you guys got questions or anything. I'll go ahead and uh, and nail these things out. Kali is about being honest with yourself. You have to work at it. Unfortunately, you don't have a school here. Thanks for the solid advice. Love training, love life. Yeah, and you know, that's and like I said, like, you know, it doesn't always have to be people in person. Like some people like they want to solo train, they want to, you know, they you've got your own goals. And that's why we started College Center the way that I started it. Some people are like, you know, I don't have a school around me. And honestly, I've had people in Chicago, they're like, I just, I just want to work out with it. I really don't want to come to class. I just want something that I can watch some videos. I can try out some drills. I can work out in my backyard with it. I just enjoy the workout of it. And I'm like, perfect, perfect. We have that service available for you. So, you know, they're still hanging out with us. They're just doing it virtually. And they know what they want, right? And that's fine. It's not about fighting for everybody. Uh, oh yeah, dude. There's some. There's some. Uh, oh, this is this is the good stuff right here. Mm. Oh, yeah. Good salad stuff in here. Cut leaf. Um. But yeah, like there's um. Uh, there's just different things that people want. So here at Collie Center, like. People that want to, like, we've had people come to us because they wanted to get better at, like, their dog brother stick fighting and stuff. They wanted to understand certain things. So I've trained with uh, some of, like, the Midwest dog brother people. Um, I've trained, I'm, I've trained with all kinds of people, dude. I've trained, you know, law enforcement. I've trained some military personnel. I've, you know, and they're, they're like, dude, I, I need, I need this for my job. And I've, I've trained with athletes. I've trained with basketball players. You know, nothing like NBA status, but, you know, I've trained with a lot of people. And they all had their own goals that they wanted to achieve. And, it, you know, it, but it had nothing to do with fighting or self-defense, right? It's just their own thing. So at Kali Center, like, we respect all of that stuff. You know, we're not expecting people to, like, I'm going to become the ultimate stick fighter. <laughs> I mean, listen to that. I want to be the ultimate stick fighter. I want to be the ultimate knife fighter. Dude, it's just it's just another way of playing the chess game, right? That's what it is. You, know, you play chess to strengthen your mind, to strengthen your ability to think. Kali, the way that I look at it, is kind of the same thing. You're you're playing chess, you know, but it, it's it's got the mental benefits to it. But you're playing a physical game of chess, right? So there's the physical uh, benefits of it as well. See what else, what else we got, man. YouTube's got to fix this. They really got to fix this thing. There we go. The same thing happened to me, but the doors were locked. Oh yeah, yeah. When I was talking about when my teacher left in Taekwondo, I can tell you're all in serious. Kali is like a lifestyle for you. Yeah, it is, because it's helped me so much. You know, I, I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be, you know, as successful as I am today without Kali. It's, it's just, it's that simple. The sensei just bounced. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've had that happen a lot, actually. I've had that happen even at seminars on smaller scales than that. You know, sensei's not wanting to, uh, you know, do a drill with me. I solo train with O-Combo sticks. They... They a little longer than Kali sticks. Great. Kali West Coast represent. Hanbo methods are quite different than methods with single stick. Their added weight and length will slow you down and make you less effective in your Kali methods unless you use them two-handed. 
maybe i mean i guess you know oh yeah, i got some bee balm growing all over i mean whatever whatever they want man it's all about whatever they want i don't really i don't really tell people that they're doing something wrong or or whatever i mean dude, if that's what he wants to do that's what he wants to do i mean that's what he wants you know some not everybody trains collie for collie remember that how high should the blade or hilted part of the stick reach when doing angles one and two well it's not really uh, high should the blade or hitting oh the upper third uh it's not really about that because different blades and sticks are different lengths so it's really about making sure that the middle of the weapon is crossing through your bridge so you have maximum leverage if you needed to make contact to your opponent's weapon so that's not really, you know, the upper third just has to adjust to the target, but that's going to be according to what your timing is in relation to your opponent's timing, which is going to be related to what range you are in so you can negotiate the proper tactic. That would probably be me at ITC. Where are we going? <laughs> We're going into the woods to train. Tim equals the god of footwork. His footwork is pretty, pretty dang good, man. It's yeah, he's definitely one of the best footworks. Fencing, Olympic, Olympic fencers, incredible freaking footwork. When you actually see this Thereza, not like on, you know, the YouTube stuff, but you really see this Thereza at real speed, it's pretty freaking impressive. Uh, feeling left alone in the woods is the worst feeling you can experience when you are checking out a new dojo. If you come across one of those, better leave it. Yeah, I get that. I'd have to train a partner because no one does it where I am. Yeah, dude, I, I, I have to do the same thing. No, nobody trains the way that I want to train. So I, I had to train Tom. I had to train Ollie. I've, had, I've trained people that became good that quit on me. Um, you know, I've had generations of staff from the beginning that all quit on me. I always have to train people, dude. Like that's, I'm training my training partners, man. That's, you know, the, the highest form of learning is through teaching. That's why we don't do teacher certifications and all that stuff. Like teach, you know, you got, if you got more knowledge than somebody else, Start teaching it because you're going to learn it a lot better. You're going to learn it from multiple different angles. You're going to retain the information a lot better. Teach. You know, like that's, yeah. You know, work, work that out. Training up a partner can really help you develop your understanding. The tricky part is finding a committed partner. Yeah, so, you know, don't, don't worry about finding a committed partner. Find a partner for right now right? If that person can train with you for three to six months, shit, that's better than waiting for the, for the perfect committed training partner, right? That's what I'm saying that there's, there's good partners, there's poor partners, and then, the, and then there's great partners, but dude, having a poor partner is better than having no partner, right? Like have a poor partner, have somebody that does this, it just, uh, they don't get it. Uh, they show up once a month and keep searching because you'll find somebody who's better who's good, and then eventually you'll find somebody who's great. It took me years of training. You know, I started training in Filipino martial arts when I was 15 years old, okay? <laughs> I mean, it took years for me to find somebody like Tom. And I knew Tom before all that. I remember Tom when he was, I knew Tom for five years before he started training with me. I remember him, you know, 14 years old at the skate parks. So, I never thought of him being a great, you know, what he is today. So, you know, keep looking. Just keep, keep putting, you know, but you got to put yourself out there. You got to be active. You know, go, go to events, put out, you know, flyers or whatever. Like, th and this is where, you know, chapter leaders, it's, it's easier for chapter leaders to find people because, you know, th they put it out there that they're on a mission to find people, right? So, that's why now, you know, Chris, he's got people to train with. Will's got people to train with. You know, the, you know these guys, they have people to train with. I know COVID sometimes puts a damper on things, but don't worry about finding that one perfect committed person. Just find someone that you can start training with and that you can start teaching. 
totally out of data to talk to you later. No problem. I can tell you both are very dedicated, loyal people. You know, I don't even think about dedication. I don't even think about loyalty. I think it's just, you know, dedication is, it's like, look, you're either going to be doing this thing or you're not going to be doing this thing. And the loyalty thing, I think, I think if you're going around saying that you're loyal, what are you doing? It's just, it's just how you treat people. You know, it's just how you treat people and, and, and how you treat yourself. It's, it's the attitude and, and the behavior that you bring every single day to the table, right? And other people determine, you know, what your loyalty is. I think I don't really look at loyalty as necessarily a virtue. I look at it as a value. And loyalty, right, it's something that other people, it's a value that other people put onto you. So I think that, you know, if you have something more like, you know, your conduct, you know, and your etiquette is part of your uh, virtue scale, then the loyalty is already, it's, it's going to be there, you know. And then the people that like you will say you have integrity and you're loyal. And then the people that don't like you are going to say you don't have integrity and you're not a loyal person. So that's a value scale to me. So you just do your thing. You do your thing and then, you know, other people will decide what you are to them. Just like having quality friends, yes. Game of Thrones is a good read. I treasure the Tao of Jeet Kune Do. What's the first line? What's the first line in, in, in the Tao of Jeet Kune Do? Without opening the book. What is it? True. Training partners. That's great too. <laughs> hey, what's up? Ever try Salat? Yes. Well, with what we can get as far as Salat as American people and Western people. Uh, but yes. I used to teach Salat, actually, a long time ago. Uh, I, had a, I had an old DVD of Salat that I used to sell that I don't sell anymore. So, yeah, I used to run a whole Salat class. That's why my little Karambit video, when people were like, this, this guy, don't, you don't even know how to use a Karambit. Uh, that video was intendedly made to piss some people off. So, I don't like the Karambit. There's reasons for it. Hello and greetings from Germany. What's happening? Message is retracted. Man, it sounds like people were putting some messages out and they kind of rethought it, right? So the middle part of the weapon should be on level with your face. No, the middle part of your weapon should be going through the bridge of your eyes, bridge of your nose for maximum leverage at point of contact. If you need to make contact uh, with your opponent's weapon, you make contact with that portion of your weapon at that particular placement, that alignment, so you have maximum leverage to withstand the follow through and power of their strike. So if you say face, I don't know what that means, right? Hi, Paul, keep up the good work. I've not been doing Kali for long, but however, you're a good teacher. Thank you. I appreciate that. You, are you in Apex? Come on, man. Are you in Apex? You got to jump into Apex. I got a discount. 30% off. Go grab the basic training course. Drill a day 30. That's the code. If you guys have been following me on YouTube and you're not in Apex, you guys are missing out big time. Thanks for those answering questions regarding collie sticks. I was wondering the difference between collie sticks, length, and weights, if it mattered. Uh, yeah, it does matter to a certain degree. You know, you got to think, why is the stick that length? Um, you know, and then the different types of sticks. We train with rattan, not only because it's a tradition of Kali, but rattan is a safer material to train with. It's not a wood, it's a vine. And it doesn't shatter and break like hardwood does when you make contact. Uh, you know, most bolos, like you want to make sure that you are training with a bolo that is designed, you know, it has the, the design is intended, right? So, like what I do, I'm not going to use a double-edged Chris sword. Like I know someone was commenting on some of my recent videos about can you do the chambers with a double-edged Chris sword? Why would you have a, another full edge coming back at you? That doesn't make any logical sense. Uh, the, a Chris sword is not balanced in a way for you to turn it around and use the other side. So you're only going to use the top three to four inches of that back edge anyways. So why have a full back edge like that? It doesn't do you any good. It doesn't do you any purpose other than it just fucking looks cool to some people. Um, so, you know, the blade, the, the tool that you're using should have the intent designed into it. Um, 
So uh, a lot of people have this idea that uh, if I train with a heavy stick, I'm gonna get faster, and that's not true. It's actually the opposite. If you're training with a heavy stick, you'll get possibly stronger, but you won't actually necessarily get faster. You'll feel like you're faster when you go to a lighter stick, but you have to have the endurance of the coordination, of the precision. And uh, when you're striking with something that forces you to use more muscular engagement, you're actually slowing the whole system down to, uh, no, sorry dude, I live in England. Apex is an online training course, buddy. You can live anywhere in the world and train in our Kali Apex program. Um, so it doesn't matter where you are. If you're in England, then you should absolutely have our Apex training. If you are anywhere outside of a two and a half mile radius of me, you should absolutely have Apex, uh, you know, if you want to ramp up your training. Um, yeah, so, you know, you want to make sure that it's really not too heavy. You know, my bolo is heavier than my stick. My bolo is about a pound and a half, um, but it's designed to where when it flies, when, when you're moving with proper mechanics, it's weightless. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's absolutely weightless once the thing is flying. But you got to have the right striking mechanics for that. You know, so... Uh, yeah, you know, I don't know. I don't know where the big heavy stick, you know, equates to speed came from. You actually want something lighter because it's going to allow your, your nervous system and your muscles to trigger faster. And that's how you develop speed. If you want to run faster, you don't run uphill, you run downhill. So your muscles have to go faster, okay? And when you want to put more power more velocity into your running, more initiative momentum development, then you can run uphill because that's where you're going to develop that power. But then you got to run downhill to get your muscles and your nervous system to trigger faster. That's where you're going to start running faster. Same thing in Kali. When you lighten the, the training material, now there's a thing of going too light, but when you lighten your training material with like a piece of rattan, your muscles and your nervous system can trigger faster. That's what develops speed, okay? Because you don't actually develop speed in your training. You earn speed through proper training. As you're becoming more coordinated, you're becoming more agile, and you're becoming more flexible in your movements, well, then you move from athletic attributes into combat attributes. And the first combat attribute is speed. There's a logical formula to this. It isn't I'm going to force speed. You need coordination, agility, and flexibility to achieve speed, okay? You become faster the more coordinated, the more agile, the more flexible you, that you are, the more precise your striking mechanics are. You become faster. You earn the speed. Uh, I have people, they think they're fast, and then they come out and train with us, and I'm like... <laughs> dude, I thought you were fast, you know? And then there's people that they are fast, but they're fast for 10, 15 seconds, <laughs> you know? Like, that's all the stamina you got. <laughs> you go only last 10, 15 seconds. And then I got people that think that they're fast, but there's no coordination. There's no control. So they can't apply tactics. And then I got people that think that they're so fast that they can't slow it down and start regulating their timing according to what the timing of their opponent is. So being fast is not necessarily great. You know, sometimes when you're training to be fast, you're actually deselling your greatness, your skills. So, uh, yeah. You know, if you move too fast, you transitioned in the flow that you didn't recognize yet, and now you went from contact, and now you're on the personoid flow, and you had no idea, and you're, uh, and you're getting hit, and you, but you were fast. So there's a lot more skill uh, to Kali than just being fast. So I trained with a rattan stick. I've trained with Kamagong. I've done all that stuff. You know, I went through the same process, and then I did actual athletic research. I did actual physical research, the research of physical skill development and uh, all my myths that I thought were right, I learned were wrong. 
So um, again, you know, people are certified to teach, but yet they don't know anything about human physics and the physics of athletic development and stuff like that. They have no idea, but yet they'll, they'll teach people as this is how you get faster. <laughs> it's, dude, this shit's already been figured out for a long time. There's this entire field out there called athletics, called sports. And uh, the, the, we've had more brilliant minds than you and I figure out the truth of how humans become faster. There is a logical system to, of training how to actually speed up your mile time, okay? How to achieve a six minute, to go from a six minute mile to a five minute mile, to a five minute mile to a four minute mile. People, humans thought four minute mile was impossible until it was achieved. So, you know, it, it's, it's, there's myths around that whole speed thing. There, there's an actual logical formula. There's a logical system of how to actually train and get faster. Little rant right there. After all, everyone is both a teacher and a student. Yeah, that's what makes them a practitioner. Everyone's a practitioner. I always hear it should pass ear or nose. Sounds like more of a preference thing or goal. Yeah, everything is a goal. Everything is a is a is personal preference based off of what your what your goals are. Everything is. For me, it's a self defense and good workout thing. I train solo and partnerless too. Love your chats, Kali forever. Thanks, Thomas. I meant the dedication and loyalty thing is a as a compliment. As in good friendship thing, yeah, it is. It is. I'm just, I'm just giving you my, uh, my take on, you know, how that, how it, it works in my mind. All right. I'm not, I'm not saying that was not a compliment. I appreciate it. Um, I just like jumping on here, and, and, and you know, I know that sometimes the way I think is, is a little bit different than the way a lot of people think. I get that a lot. And uh, sometimes, you know, the way that I think, maybe it can kind of like jog something and, and get people to think a little bit differently about certain things. You know, and, and that thought, those thoughts should kind of go outside of Kali. Like, I think so much about Kali that it, it, it's not even Kali anymore. You know, it's just life. So. What is the Huba flow for? I can't use when I spar. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know. You gotta come out to ITC, man. You gotta come out to ITC. There's different variations of that drill. Most people are not using that drill in a matter of learning tactics. They're just stripping techniques. We, uh, the way we do that drill is very different. Very different than the way that like other people do that drill. My retraction was a spelling. Correction. Oh, I wasn't even talking about your your retraction. There was other ones that I read the comments before, and and they uh, and I was going to answer them, but then they they retracted it. Been training with Kali Center for about four years on YouTube and with your DVDs. Still looking for and training partners. Love what you do and thanks, Brian. Man, where are you located? Where are you located, dude? I got it now. Thanks. I'll probably ask more when I try it out. Most of my questions are about angles one and two, as they should be. No, sorry, dude. I live. Oh, yeah, I already did that. I swear angles one and two are the most complicated, at least for me. Angle one, to be more precise. Yeah, they are uh, a lot more than what people think that they are. I mean, there's always room for, you know, perfecting the precision of your of your fundamentals. Um, I talk about that a lot, you know, being able to precisely strike your angle one for a you know long duration of time. Like, how consistent is it? And, um, yeah, dude, like, my angle one and my angle two are constantly improving. I've been doing this for a long time, and they're constantly improving. You know, so the more that you train it, you just train. I mean, nothing's going to substitute time. 
You just got to keep putting more time into it and uh, they'll just keep getting better and better. As long as you're doing it and you're paying attention to what you're doing, they'll get better and better. Film yourself. You don't have to post it up there for the world to see, but videoing yourself is really good because then you get to kind of watch back it, you know, watch it back and, and see like, ah, oh, dude, this is what I'm doing. My, my two is coming out like right here. It needs to be right there, you know? And other styles will tell you different. They'll be like, no, your two should be way down here. Like, uh, there's, but you're not protecting anything if you do that. Um, you know, I, I don't know, dude. Like, it's everyone's got their own thing. So, hello, Paul. May I ask the Apex Ultimate in the 30% deal, having trouble choosing between the Ultimate. So, the, the Ultimate package is not included in a 30% off deal. The reason for that is because it's already a massive discount when you look at everything you're getting because you're getting the entire site. Um, when you look at the Apex Ultimate Package, you get access to everything at collegecenter.training. So everything that's on our online school, you have access to it. Everything that I'm, I continue to build goes into that package. So when you have that package, it, it's it's a massive discount already. I mean that you know we we have so much. I mean we have so much material up there. You know um, that is the best deal, the best deal because you you get everything. You get everything. And the middle Patreon. Yeah. So you know be, between that, it, it's. It's, uh, if, if you, if you do, if you do, Dominic, if you do the premium Patreon, sign up to the premium Patreon and then message me directly from there. And then I'll give you a little bit, I'll, I'll give you a better deal on, on the, on the other stuff. How about that? You're already halfway there, dude. I mean, you might as well just do it because it, it's the best deal. And then if you want to come to ITC as a premium, it's free for you, right? Yeah, dude, you definitely should be going to ITC. What's your thoughts on Tai Chi and Qigong? I don't have any thoughts on that. I'm not a Tai Chi or Qigong practitioner. I think if you're interested in it, you should do it. For a video call. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can do that too. You can do that too. Um, but yeah, that's that's where the video uh, the video calls start is at, is at the middle tier, the middle uh, membership for the coaching stuff. I slow train, is it good to develop attributes? What's your goals? What's your goals? You know, are you, are you looking to become the ultimate stick fighter? Then no, you know, slow training, at some point you got to speed it up. But if you're like, dude, I'm just, I'm enjoying the process of what I'm doing, then it's great. What's your goals? You know, don't, don't you can't ask me a question without revealing what your goals are. Because I got to answer your question according to what your goals are. Otherwise, I got to answer it according to what my goals are, and no one's going to like the answers to the questions then. <laughs> I go so quickly, I no longer feel in full control. I've started correcting that error, but really fast is still fun at times. Yeah, so if you enjoy, if you want to train for fun and you get the fun out of going fast, and do whatever you want. Like, I don't, I don't correct my students that are like, I want to do it this way. Okay, well then do it that way. Now, when you come train with us and you, when you get sick and tired of getting your hand blasted, you know, then you, maybe you'll change your mind or whatever. But like, dude, if you're in your backyard, here, here's my take on all this. If you are in your backyard and you just have a blast, you know, hitting a heavy bag or a tire stack as hard and as fast as you can, as out of control as you possibly can, then do that right? Just do that. Okay. Let loose then like that's your training. That's what you want out of it. Do that. It's not wrong. Okay. It's not wrong. I promise you in a self-defense situation, 
you whack somebody with a stick like that right across their, their kneecap, they're probably going to be thinking twice about messing with you. Okay, most people are not training this stuff the way that we're training this stuff. Okay, most people are not. So most people have not been whacked with a stick on an unprotected hand or an unprotected part of their body with that type of velocity and force with it. So you, the self-defense is, you're using a freaking weapon, dude. Trust me, the self-defense, it, it's built in there. It's gonna suck for that person when you when you crack them in the head with it, okay? Like they will stop. <laughs> so have fun with it, dude. Have fun with it. If that's your thing, you're like, this is what I want out of it. I just want to let out. I want to get all that stress from my job. I want to get it out. I got in a fight with the missus. I'm just gonna get it out. Then go do that. That's perfect. Nothing wrong with that. Keep it up. Greetings from Kuwait. Hey. Using heavy sticks is almost like bodybuilding. It doesn't train speed at all. Yeah, but if someone enjoys that, then they should do it. From Indonesia. Hey. Uh, Mike, are you laughing at my answer about uh, Tai Chi and, and Qigong? So, I mean, I think, I think they're cool. You know, like, you know, you're learning a lot of good muscular control through Tai Chi, you know, Qigong, I do believe has a lot of good healing uh, components to it and things, you know, there's some training in Kali that we kind of go along that route. Like, especially in my drill a day, you got, you know, you'll hear me sometimes in my training and stuff, I'll start mentioning things like, you know, go slow and smooth like a Tai Chi. I think it's good. I think, I think that there's, there's some good developments and stuff for it. I think there's some good health factors. I think there is some really good athletic recovery training in that stuff. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm not a Kung Fu guy. I'm not a Chinese martial arts guy. So I don't know much about that stuff. You know, when people are sitting there like combat Tai Chi and all that, like I've seen it, you know, the art of shoving a body and all that stuff. I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a Kung Fu expert. I'm not a Tai Chi expert. You know, I'm not going to pretend that, that I can answer those questions accurately. And, and to be honest with you, you know, if I'm not into it, I, I really don't give it any thought. You know, someone asked me uh, a question the last time I was live about it, what I thought of somebody. I'm like, I don't, I don't know, dude. I don't, I don't watch that guy. I don't, I don't care what that guy's doing. Like, like I, I'm, foc I'm focused on where I'm going. I'm focused on my direction. You know, I already, uh, I got my goals. I, I found my people that I'm like, I want to study those people deep. And I'm not going to deviate off of it. So, and the people that I study, they're not martial artists. They have nothing to do with martial arts, you know? So, and they're improving my Kali every single day. So I don't, uh, you know, I've gotten more out of my Kali training from learning from Aristotle, you know, from, from learning from Seneca, from learning from Marcus Aurelius. Like I've gotten more out of my Kali stuff from, from studying those dead people, you know? So it's, you know, if it's not, if it doesn't catch my interest, you know, they wanted to diagnose me when I was a kid with, with, with ADD. Now that's right before they came out with ADHD. It was just ADD at the time. And, uh, you know, they wanted, they, they, I had to do the whole test and they wanted to diagnose me and put me on Ritalin and, and all that stuff. They did that to my cousin. And, Dude, like I, I, I'm of the mindset that the reason why they wanted to, to diagnose me with that and drug me up is because they weren't good enough to, to, to get my attention, to keep my attention. You know, they just weren't interesting enough because Kali has my attention. You know, martial arts has my attention. Gardening has my attention. This is, this is the slowest thing in the freaking world, dude. To sit there and watch a plant grow from seed is the slowest process in the world. And this keeps my interest. This grabs my attention. So in school, all those teachers, they just, they just didn't have the skills to, to grab my attention, to keep my attention. You know? Um... But yeah, dude, this is like, 
Isn't that crazy? All good info. Work is calling me. Have an awesome day. Yep, Victoria, you have a good, great day too. How did you find? How did you find out about Kali and what inspired you to continue? I found out about Kali kind of on accident. I was wrestling with a friend of mine in, in my front room growing up. We were teenagers. We used to skateboard together and play guitars and all that stuff. And uh, we were wrestling around and and then you know I was showing him my Taekwondo trophies and stuff like that. And he was like, dude, man, if you're into martial arts, you should come over and see what we do. He was Filipino. And uh, yeah, then that was my introduction to Filipino martial arts. Uh, what kept my interest in it? It was freaking cool. You know, uh, uh, I was training with weapons right away. Uh, that was the first time I ever trained with weapons first. Uh, it hurt. It was painful. It was hard. It was academic. Um... And it worked like it was just it was working and in my martial arts before you know it was logical like it just it made sense and for a long time you know when they left i was trying to find another another filipino martial arts another martial arts just in general that had the same kind of logical approach that just made sense and it, it was just it was really hard to find I got into Jeet Kune Do because, um, you know, be well, because of the Kali tied to it. Um, and because it opened me up to a lot of other martial arts. So I'm like, you know, maybe I'll find something else out there uh, that's similar to it. Um, you know, fencing is fantastic. But, you know, when you look at like Olympic fencing, you're, you're on the strip. You can't leave the strip. I liked JKD, specifically the Vunak approach, because it was all, I mean, dude, find a way to cheat, right? Like, Vunak tells you that. Find a way to cheat. And that's how my first uh, Eskrima, they used the term Eskrima. They did not use the term Arnis or Kali. They used the term Eskrima. Um, they actually used, they actually called it Esgrima, like the Spanish. Um, and, uh, you know, their, their whole thing was, you know, cheat, cheat cheat you know so i'd be like dude should I, should I be cheating in school and i remember i asked him I'm like so are you telling me that cheating is a great thing yes so i should cheat in school yes <laughs> i was like dude this is awesome <laughs> i love these guys so i mean you know that's this kind of what kept my my attention with it you know it's just it's hard it's academic you know it, it's it's mentally challenging as much as it is physically challenging um, it hurt. It was painful. There was a different level of consequence, you know, when you got hit with that stick. It, it, it was like skateboarding for me, you know. To this day, you know, I haven't had uh, anyone to spar with that hit me harder than, you know, that that ten stair, you know, that set of ten stairs. When you mess up your trick and you smash into the concrete, you know, or when you rack yourself on the handrail. Like I, I haven't. I haven't been punched in the head. I mean, yeah, I've been punched in the head, but nothing like the pain that I've endured from skateboarding, you know, and the, uh, you know, the weaponry, like we started with hickory sticks. I posted a picture of it on my Instagram stories a, a few days ago. Uh, my first, my first stick, uh, we trained with hickory. I mean, that shit breaks bones. Like it hurts even like light taps and stuff. It just, it's different than rattan. And that's just what caught my attention. But the academics of it, the logic behind it, I'm a very logical person. I tend to be more logical than I am emotional. Um, and that's, that's why I stuck with it, dude. It's, I'm like, this, it just makes sense. Like the whole approach to training, you know, they didn't talk about fighting. It was, it was an exercise for them. And at the time I wanted to train it because I wanted to fight. Like I just, I didn't care about self-defense. I wanted, I just wanted to be able to fight. You know, I, I never looked at, at it as like, like when I had my scuffles all through like high school and stuff like that. And I was 15 when I first uh, learned about, about Filipino martial arts. So I was still in, I was still in high school. And, uh, you know, like I, <laughs> dude, I didn't, I didn't care about self-defense. Like my idea of self-defense was hit first and hit fast and hit a lot. 
And if you could find something to hit the person with, that's better. I learned that at a very young age. So Kali, it just made sense. You know, when he's like, what would you rather do? Hit them with your hand or hit them with the stick? I'm like, I'd rather hit them with the stick. Kali's in your blood, man. It's in your blood, you know? So I don't know. Why do I continue with it? You know, we were talking about this. I was talking about this with, uh, with Chris and Kevin and them when we were in St. In, uh, St. Augustine and stuff. And I'm like, I don't know, dude. I have to. I just have to do it. I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't have this like one thing that, that, you know, stands out. That's like, you know, the, the driving motivation. I just have to. I don't know what it is, dude. I have, I have to train Kali. I just have to do it. And that's why I continue. Uh, there's a school my student John goes to right there in Seattle. Oh, uh, you're, in, you're in England, so I don't know where to find it in England. You know, so like... You know, my student John, you know, he shares a lot of the, the destreza that he's been that he's been training and, and all that. And uh, you know, he cause he train he's been training with me since twenty twelve. You know, and uh <laughs> he's like, dude, like last year's ITC, he's like, dude, you're going deep. It's like Paul, you're going you're going you're going crazy deep. You know, uh, we have different layers of the geometry. So I, I've got the, ge the geometry. I have it, the combat geometry. I have that layered into four different layers. It's stacked in four different layers. And he's like, he's looking at it and we're training some of the stuff and I'm giving him, you know, certain, John's one of our like more advanced guys too. He trains Kali with me. And then he also trains, trains a Destreza out of a school in, um, there in Seattle, Washington. And, uh, he's like, dude. This shit's crazy. Um, so yeah, I don't know where to find it as far as uh, in in uh, England. You're gonna have to do some research on that. You know, a lot of the Stresa, a lot of the groups train it kind of slow, but the Stresa speeds up. Like it's fast. Like when you're actually going at speed, it's fast. And they don't really show that. Most teachers, you know, teachers don't really show that about Destreza. You know, Destreza, Destreza was developed off of two basic, two basic things. Mathematics and religion. Okay? Mathematics and, and Christianity is what La Verdadera Destreza was developed off of. So, um, you know, you got it. You got to... You got to get in the room with those guys, man. You got to find somebody that that's actually training it to develop the skills of the Streza. Like John is training it to develop the skills of, well, not really develop the skills of the Streza. He wants to develop the skills of Kali. Um, but, you know, that's why he's training it. So broken footwork, dude. There's so much broken footwork in the Streza. It's all based on broken timing broken rhythms like there's there you know and, and i remember when i was training in pikiti tertia they're like we're the only ones that do this we're uh, uh no they're not this is why i'm 100 convinced that even like an art like pikiti tertia dude it was taught to the family from the spanish because dude I, i'm telling you when when you dive into the streza at that depth and you have practitioners at that caliber in it they're like yeah dude that's that's uh, that's right out of our encompass. Like I'm showing them, you know, broken footwork. Like yeah, that's right out of our encompass. That's we do that. We move around, and it's, I, I, you know, I'm like, uh, that's broken footwork. That's literally straight out of broken footwork. Now the difference between PTK and Destreza is that PTK their footing's all off. <laughs> their footing position is all fucked up on their broken footwork. Um, so, it, you know, they, they don't really, I don't know if that maybe that got lost in translation or whatever it is, but it, it, it's still good, but it's, it's not the same. It's not the same. So, uh, you know, I don't know, dude, you're going to have to, you're going to have to do some research and go find it. <laughs> Sorry, I can't answer your question better than that. Um, I, I'm going to get to a few more of these and then I'll, uh, jet out of here. I've been on here for a while. I like your questions though, guys. I always like, 
you know, coming on here and your questions are great. They're great. They help to expand my brain. Let's see here. I'll be training for the rest of my life. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. You should be. From Norway. You're from uh, Dallas, Oregon. Come out to ITC, man. Come out to ITC. Come train, dude. There you go. You got Morgan telling you you want to train. Dude, you can train with Morgan. He's right there in Portland or wherever, like real close to there. You can train with Morgan. Come on out and train with, uh, with you know, come, come out to ITC. You should have came out to St. Augustine and trained with me, dude. You know? Go train with John. He's right there in Seattle. I could get you hooked up with John if you want to train with John. You could train in Kali with him. You can train in Destreza with him. You know, whatever you want to do, you can train with him on that. Have you ever trained the special forces? Uh, I've had people who have told me that they were, you know, um, that they were Green Beret, Force Recon. I do not and will not do government contracts. So I will not ever do a government contract. So I will not go and teach the special forces or anyone like that under a government contract. If if they want to come and, and train with me or something like that, they, they can come and, you know, I don't, if, if the government wants to pay for that, that's fine. Uh, I have law enforcement that do that from time to time. They'll get their departments to pay, you know, for them to come out to my training camps and stuff like that. Um, but I will not do a government contract. Okay, I'll go with the middle Patreon and email you since I found your channel. I have brought so much equipment from stick staff, gununting trainers, and even small pawn and can finger knives. Cool, dude. Cool. Yeah, get on in there. Get on into the uh, into the Patreon. Get on to the, the coaching. Shoot me that message, and I'll help you out. All right? I am Rabbi from Bangladesh. Nice. Thanks for your honesty. Dude, that's all I can give, man. <laughs> I don't know how to give anything else. <laughs> I ADD, but Dad Belt took care of that. And yes, you are right about the speed and plants. Kali is challenging for the autism, but it beats the drugs. This Glenn Baker, by the way. Yeah, I figured I figured that out by by your screen name, buddy. Uh, yeah, dude, I, I agree with you, man. I think you know the drugs. Dude, you don't need people don't need to be on drugs, dude. They they just need to find the right activities in their life. Kali's a great activity. You know, like I've trained with you, dude. I've trained with you in, in person, you know, Kali, it's 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 the best activity. You know, it, it really is. The, and the way that we do it, I know we do it very differently than a lot of other people. Our our mindset around training is very different from other people. The group of people that you're around when you're training with Kali Center is it's very different. It's very unique. Yeah, dude, you don't you don't need drugs. No, people don't need drugs. You know, you got depression. You don't need an, you know anti anxiety medication. You need to come train with us. You need to come train Kali. Maybe you're depressed because not enough people in your life told you the truth, and you've always known the truth, and everybody else has lied to you. That's pretty depressing. That would put you in a in a very depressed state. So you need to get around people that, that aren't going to be lying to you, you know. And you need to see how people interact with each other, people who don't lie to each other. Like, dude, the way, the way that we interact with each other, you know, Tom and, and Ollie, myself, Chris, Will. Dude, there's no lying, man. There's no lying. It, it's always truthful, you know. And, and, and we're not looking, you know, we don't, if we have to say something, you know, we're not looking to, you know, hurt each other's feelings or anything like that's. We don't, we don't have, you know, that ill intent in there either. So that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, if, if you're feeling like that, you got depression issues, you know, you're, you're, you're whatever it is, maybe you got you got to take a look at the people that, that you're spending your time with and you might need to be getting around, you know, you, you need, you, might, you just, you need to update your friends. It's like what Victoria said, you know, what the comment that she made is it's like having, you know, the quality of friends. You got to update the quality of, of your friends. You know, you got to update the quality of the people that are in your life. Try that. Yeah, you know, be, before buying into these American, you know, 
ads selling you drugs. You got to go ask your doctor about this drug. Come out to an ITC, dude. Come out to an ITC. You know, it's... Uh, Chris said, right, good talk. Don't hang out with losers. Do not hang out with losers. Don't. If people are doing drugs, people are telling you to get on prescriptions, and do not hang out with those people. You do not need those people. You don't need that stuff. And and you know you know Glenn you know that's another thing too is that you know they were misdiagnosing autism with ADD. So they're putting people with autism on Ritalin. <laughs> Cheat Kundo. Yeah, dude. That's a good name for it. From Netherlands, we do not have many Kali Eskrima schools. What would you advise me to do? Get on Kali Apex, okay? Go to KaliCenter.com, Steve. Steve from Netherlands. Go to KaliCenter.com. Get the Kali Apex. Get the coaching that goes with it. And then whenever you can, get to Belgium and go train with my man David in Belgium. He ain't too far away from you, okay? You know, send me your information. I'll give it to my man, David. He'll get in contact with you. Anytime he's got something going on out there in Belgium, he'll get in contact with you so that way you can train with people in person. But get on the Kali Apex because that's, you know, at least that we're going to teach you how to solo train. You can get coaching with us, you know, in between those times that you can get out there and train with David. You guys got to start taking some action. You guys can't can't sit there and keep waiting for me to come to you or for people to come to you. You got to start taking actions. You have fans in Brazil. We like your videos very much. Thank you, Lewis. I appreciate that. I'm a fan of Brazil, man. That's a place I've been wanting to go to. Do you ever come down to the south? For example, Louisiana. I was just in St. Augustine, man. Where were you? <laughs> Tom was just in Pensacola. Dude, you guys, you guys got to get on the email list. You guys got to follow, you know, the social medias. So you guys aren't missing this stuff. Do I ever get down to Louisiana? Are you, are you going to come up to ITC? Are you going to come up to South Dakota and come out to ITC? Are you going to, are you going to take some action? You're going to make it happen. That's what I had to do. I, I had to go to where my teachers were. I couldn't, this is what I'm saying. Everybody's waiting for someone to show up when all you have to do is you got to be the person that shows up. From Thailand, here it's hard to Kali training and practitioner, and practitioner. I train by myself all your videos. I want to join your community to practice and promote this martial art in Thailand so much. Get in Kali Apex, man. Get in Kali Apex. Come on. I don't know why you guys aren't going in Kali Apex. It's a steal of a freaking deal. Okay? You, you, you can get, right now, you can get access to my entire online school for $47 a month. Everything's negotiable. You can get coaching with us for $40 a month. You get extra benefits at 75 bucks a month. It's cheaper than going to most martial arts schools. You get instant communication with us. You get coaching with us. You get all of our training right there online, anywhere you are. You download the app to your smartphone, and you literally have us as your coaches in your pocket. You know, you get discounts to attend any of our in-person trainings. If you're in the premium Apex, you get ITC for free. Like, I don't know why you guys, I'm trying to make this as easy as possible for you guys. And I don't know why, I don't, I mean, I got a lot of people in Apex, but I don't know why all you guys are not taking advantage of the things that we're, that I'm creating for you guys. If, if, if it was me, I would be in these programs. 
That's why I created these programs. I created these programs because I wish I had these programs. You know? So, you know, but remember, everything, listen to my words. Everything is negotiable. You got to come get it. You got to come get it. Okay? <laughs> come get it, man. Come get it. Going to Patreon now, then off out again to train. Nice. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see you in Patreon in 10 minutes, my friend. I'm going to see you in there. And then once you get signed up, Dominic, once you're signed up, the first thing I want you to do is send me a message about two things. Number one, to help you get a better deal for, the, uh, for everything else in the online school. And number two, set up your first uh, online coaching session with us. All right? So once you're signed up, send me a message with those two things in it. Let's get your first coaching session signed, you know, scheduled in, and uh, and then I'll also get you a deal for some of the other training stuff. I highly recommend changing friends if you can. Yeah, dude, <laughs> I'm with you on that. I, I've made massive changes on my friends. Damn YouTube crash. <laughs> yeah, it does that sometimes. All right, guys, I'm going to jump out of here. I'm getting out of here. Uh, I've been on here for a long time now, a lot longer than I was planning. Get into Apex. Take advantage of it. You know, start off with the basic, you know, our basic training. I got a 30% off discount right now. Just use the code DRILLADAY30 or jump into the coaching. If you jump into the coaching program first, if you get our gold membership or premium membership, if you get that first, send me a message and I'll get you a better deal for the other stuff. All right? And then think about coming out to ITC if you can this year. The dates are June 23rd to the 27th. We're training for five days. Get around the people. If you need to make a change in your life, if you need to make a change of the people that, are, that you're around... If you got to make a, an upgrade to your friends and all that stuff, get out to ITC, get into Apex, get to ITC, and start making the change. Kali will change your life. I, I guarantee you that. It, it's changed my life. I took these exact actions that I'm telling you guys to take. It will change your life. It changed my life. It will change your life for the better. All right. So I'm going to jump out of here, and uh, hopefully I see some new people over in our Apex and uh, I got five more slots available for ITC. That's what I got. So uh, if you want it, make sure to message me so we can lock you in on that. All right. I'll talk to you guys later on. Put everything I said in this video. It's long, 108 minutes. Put everything I said in this video, put it into practice, and you're going to be great in your collie. All right. Talk to you later. See you guys.